Opening arguments will begin today in the defamation lawsuit actor Johnny Depp filed against his ex-wife, actress Amber Heard. Now, seven jurors and four alternates have officially been chosen. Depp is suing Heard, alleging that she ruined Heard's reputation when she described herself as a victim of domestic abuse. The courtroom is closed to the public and neither actor is permitted to pose for any pictures or sign any autographs in or around the courthouse grounds. Several celebrity witnesses, including James Franco and Elon Musk, will appear in court or virtually. The trial is expected to last a month. So joining Morning Rush to go more in depth about this case is Seth Berenswag, a business law attorney. Thank you so much for joining us, Seth. Uh, so why did Johnny Depp decide to file this defamation suit in Virginia instead of California, which is where they both live? Sure, well, Johnny Depp took a gamble and made a choice. His lawyers probably told him that although there are cases in most states that provide some kind of immunity for a defendant in a defamation case that speaks about an issue of public concern, the law in Virginia is much lighter and easier to overcome for him than the status of that law in California. So he made a gamble and he rolled the dice and he filed his lawsuit here in the Fairfax County Circuit Court. So as you've said, we have a star-studded uh, list of witnesses and Hollywood has indeed landed here in Northern Virginia. He is therefore litigating this case in the Fairfax Circuit Court. He tried in a motion to recently use that law to his advantage, but it backfired because the judge ruled against him and ordered that she still has that defense. So as trial starts today, all cards are on the table. Got it. So Depp was never criminally charged with abuse and Heard never named him specifically in the op-ed that she wrote. So how hard is it going to be for Depp to prove defamation? Well, all defamation cases are hard, mm -hmm. but for Johnny Depp, this is going to be even harder. And the reason is because when you're suing someone who is a public figure, the legal standard is even harder. You have the traditional pieces of the legal standard talking about a statement that was made that was factually false, that caused actual financial harm to the plaintiff. But here, the plaintiff also has to show that the speaker, or in this case, the op-ed writer, Amber Heard, acted with actual malice. That's an even harder burden to carry. So as a result, even though he really did suffer damages as a result of this op-ed, days afterwards, D Disney fired him from Pirates of the Caribbean. He lost tens of millions of dollars. This is going to be a difficult case for him. But make no mistake about it, in the counter defamation lawsuit by Amber Heard, she's going to have the same hurdles. So therefore, it's quite possible at the end of the day that the parties lose and the only winners end up being the lawyers. <laughs> right. So Johnny Depp has tried to sue a media company for claiming that he was violent towards his ex-wife after the op-ed was released, but he lost that suit. And now he's going after Amber Heard directly, as we know. So what are the differences when it comes to suing a media company and then when it um, when you sue a person when it comes to libel? Well, media companies really have uh, some different rules of the game depending upon whether it's in print or it's uh, online. And there are certain legal protections that are uniquely in place for media players. Notably, uh, one of the reasons why we're in jurisdiction here in Northern Virginia is because the Washington Post published the op-ed article. Their offices are in Virginia. Their server that published the op-ed is in Virginia, which triggered jurisdiction. However, they're not in the case right now. It's just the current parties of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. So although it started that way, you now foot back to the regular standard where individuals are going to have to show actual malice. Uh, and it's going to be very difficult to prove. I think it's also going to be tough for the jury to stomach some of this evidence. Very vivid evidence, and you really have two stars behaving very badly. And uh, it's going to be difficult to see how either of them will be making a positive impression on the jury. All right. Seth Berenswag, a business law attorney, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it.